Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. KDE Plasma 5.16 was released a few days ago and, as always, it brings a lot of enhancements to an already stellar desktop environment. The team is polishing about every corner of the experience, so it's high time we take a look at what's new right after this. This video is brought to you by Linode. Linode is an independent company offering Linux-based cloud hosting and computing since 2003. They support Linux and many open source initiatives from Kubuntu to conferences, hackathons and meetups. All their servers use SSDs and prices start at $5 a month. They offer add-ons to help extend your server and provide a simple and powerful control panel to deploy, boot, resize and clone in just a few clicks. Give Linode a try by clicking on the link in the description and use the code LinuxEXP19 for a free $20 credit. Alright, now let's see what has changed. The desktop. KDE Plasma 5.16 comes with a new wallpaper, still grounded in the geometrical shapes characteristic of their art style. It looks nice, but nothing too amazing here. The main focus for this new release is actually the notification system. These have been completely redesigned from the ground up. They come with a new Do Not Disturb mode and notifications are now grouped by application to make it easier to manage them. Important notifications will appear on top of full screen windows to make sure you don't miss anything crucial and notifications for file transfers have also been improved. To complement this, KD Plasma now has a whole new settings panel for notifications which is a lot clearer and usable than the previous iteration with a lot of advanced options like changing the position they will appear in and managing how notifications appear depending on their importance. On top of that, Plasma 5.16 has seen some work in the themes department. The themes will now be correctly applied to the panels when you select them and theme designers can customize widgets in depth. And some individual widgets have received more attention, such as the color picker, which allows you to drag a color directly from the widget to another application, and the team added the show desktop icon on the panel by default, although whether you see it or not will depend on your distro's implementation of KDE. The task manager now has more legible context menus and the team added an option to let you send a window to another virtual desktop just by middle clicking its entry in the task manager. When editing a panel, you can select, for widgets that support it, to show alternatives. This will allow you to swap a widget for an equivalent one without messing with the panel layout too much. In the system tray, KDE 5.16 will add a microphone icon when an application is recording audio. Middle clicking on that icon will mute your mic and scrolling over it will raise or lower the recording volume. This is something Elementary OS added a few months ago and it's a great addition for people who want to spend a lot of time in front of a microphone. Other small improvements include the lock screen which has been revamped a bit using new icons, labels and tweaking the login button layout to look nicer. The drop shadows under windows are now pure black again to improve legibility and contrast and Dolphin can now lock and unlock Plasma Vaults. The settings. KDE lives for its settings, allowing users to configure almost anything. Most settings pages have been polished and the main focus has been on the appearance section. The look and feel page is now on the top level of that category and icons from many of the settings pages have been revamped to allow users to more easily identify each one. The color schemes and window decorations pages now use a grid view to show a preview of each color scheme. You can now filter dark and light color schemes from that window and it also supports drag and drop to install and undoing the suppression of a specific theme. Applying a color scheme can also now be done just by double clicking on it instead of having to go to the apply button. The login screen page now displays more accurate previews for each theme and the wallpaper slideshow settings now display the images in the folders you've selected to be part of the slideshow and you can pick the ones you want to display or not. Finally, Plasma 5.16 lets you configure touchpads using the libinput driver only for those using X11, which should still be the majority of users. Speaking of X11, a lot of work has also been done on the Wayland front. The first support for the proprietary NVIDIA driver has been added and you can now drag and drop content to and from a Wayland window to an X Wayland 1 and vice versa. New shortcuts have been added to lock your screen with Meta plus L and to show or hide the desktop with Meta plus D. 
As always, the plasma settings are one of the most complete on any desktop environment on Linux, and seeing some work to make them more user-friendly is always welcome, since one complaint Plasma gets often is that the settings are too hard to navigate and to locate. Discover Discover is KDE's default software manager, and it's been slightly improved in this release as well. The new update page now splits apps into two sections, one for the downloading ones and one for those that are being installed. Once a package is installed, it will disappear from that update page, and you can also force quit an installation or an update if you need to. The sources menu that lets you pick where you'll be installing an app from, for example the repositories or Flathub, now shows the version number of the app for each source. This will be very handy to pick the source you want to install from, making sure you get the newer or the most stable version of each application. Finally, the task completion indicator in Discover now looks better with a real progress bar. And that's about it for the main features in Plasma 5.16. A lot of bugs also have been fixed, as always, and if there is nothing that truly excites me here, I like that the team is spending time refining the experience, the settings, and giving users more usable stuff to work with. KD Plasma already has almost every feature you'd like in a desktop environment, so polish is the right direction, I think. 5.16 should already be available in most rolling releases at the time this video goes live, and you can always try it with KDE Neon if you prefer. Every time I try KDE for these videos, I always feel a yearning to use it for a while as my daily driver, and this time is no different. I'll let you know if I make the jump. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of Plasma 5.16's new features. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page, which I linked in the description below. Check it out to see which perks patrons enjoy. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!